programmers. I've done another video on reading in input into a C program where you want to scan in an integer, so you've got percent %d, and then you check to see the return value of scanf. If it's a return value of 1 and you were trying to read in one integer, that means the person did read in or did type in a legal integer like I just did with 5. But if you run the program and somebody types in words or letters instead of numbers, then scanf is going to have a return value of 0, so you can go into this else. Well, um, on my YouTube channel, somebody asked, well, what if they enter in a floating point number? And this one, it's going to recognize everything before the period as the legal integer. So your scanf value will still have a 1, your number will be 3, but that may not be what you had in mind when you were trying to read in um, an integer from the user. So I wrote another program that's a bit more complicated. So I included a couple new headers up here and a lot of extra variables. And I'm going to read the input. Even though I'm asking for a number, I'm going to read it in as a string. And I'm going to use a percent %s when I'm reading in from the string. And I'm just hard coding and saying the maximum string size that I'm interested in is 100. Because if someone's entering an integer, I mean, they're not going to have pi to 100 digits or something like that. Probably it's going to be less than that. So we'll go ahead and scan it in into a string. And at that point in time, if somebody enters in something like 3.14, it actually, it's like they enter in a 3, like the character a 3, and then a period, and then a 1, and a 4. So that would be what would be inside this array of characters. So I'm going to just print out to the screen what I read from the user, and then I'm going to loop through the array of the input, that 100 characters, and check, is it between 0 and 9? Those are the, because of the, the way the ASCII table is laid out, 0 to 9 is all consecutive. So if it's in that range, you've just got a normal integer. But I put a not sign, exclamation point, to say if it's not in that range, then either you could have a floating point number, which means you have a, a period. So I increase this variable, is float. Um, I want to make sure there's only one period, because if there's two or three periods, then that's also not a legal floating point number. Um, so I'm going to keep track of how many floating point numbers there are. And then I've got, if it's not a floating point and it's not a number, then it's just a normal character. So I'm looping in the input from the user, something that's going to be like this, you know, uh, characters. And then at the end, if is char, if it's read at least one character that's not a number and it's not a period, then that's not a valid number. Um, also, if you've got more than one decimal point, it's not a valid floating point number. If you just have one decimal point and the rest of them are numbers, then that is a floating point number. And we can actually convert it with this function, ATOF, pass in our array of characters, and it's going to give back a floating point number. So at the top of the program, I have a floating point number variable and an int uh, num variable. If it's not a, um, a string that has letters and it's not a float, then maybe it's a good old int. And we can say this is a valid integer and convert it with ATOI and pass in our string and get our integer back. So to prove that, that I can convert it to an integer, I've got percent %d. To prove that I can convert it to a float, I've got percent %f. So let's try a few test cases. So the first test case, um, a valid floating point number. And at this point, it did realize that that's a floating point number, and it was able to convert that to a variable that's a floating point. If I type in, you know, just a regular integer, it realizes that's an int. If I type in some letters, it's not a valid number. And even if I combine, if I start typing in a valid number, but then I throw in some letters at the end, it knows that that is not a valid number. Um, so hopefully this program will help solve um, some extra cases where you're trying to read in an integer or a floating point. But it doesn't handle, the way it's written, doesn't handle negative numbers. You'd have to, um, when you're checking for characters, check for the negative sign. It doesn't handle imaginary numbers, but you could expand on this to handle whatever kind of numbers you like. All right, happy programming.